Happy Pi Day everyone! Some of you watching might be really excited as much as I am because Pi Day is something absolutely worth celebrating and you know all about why it's worth celebrating. And others of you might be thinking, Pi Day? I don't even know what this is supposed to be about. Can someone please help me understand why people are talking about pies but not eating pies? What's going on there? Pi Day is about celebrating a number and it's a number that's really important in mathematics and it's, that's why it's so important that it gets its own name Pi, which is actually a Greek letter, and it was the ancient Greeks who first helped us discover this number and what it means. But you might be thinking, what do you mean by discover a number? You can just think of a number and then that's what it is. What, what takes discovery when it comes to numbers? And to understand what I mean by that, I want you to think with me about where numbers come from. There are some numbers which they just come from counting. For example, I can say, well, how many people are there in a family? There's three of them, and that's where the number comes from. It's from the size of a group. There are other numbers that aren't whole numbers like this. They are parts or fractions, and they may come from sharing things out. Suppose I've got two enormous blocks of chocolate, and I want to share them among three people, how much of a bar of chocolate will each of those people get? Well, I could divide these into equal sections, and you can see that uh, I've got now one, two, three, four, five, six sections. Six is another number that comes from counting, but each of the three people will get two of those chunks, right? Two of those chunks, I'm gonna have two chunks over here, and then there's two chunks left in the middle. So how much of a chocolate bar does each of the original people get? And the answer is what we would call two thirds of a bar. And that's a number that doesn't just come from counting. In this case, it comes from sharing. So all kinds of different numbers come from different places. And the number pi, this is how you write it, it actually comes from measuring circles. So here's a circle that I've brought along and if you have a think about the dimensions of this circle there are two dimensions or measurements that are really important to a circle that sort of tell you everything you need to know. Firstly there's the distance around the circle that's what we call the circumference and then there is the distance across the circle and that's called the diameter. By the way, the word diameter literally means what it sounds like. It's a measurement, a meter, and it is across or dia, again Greek word, uh, from one end of the circle to the opposite end. So that diameter there is that distance across. Now I want you to look closely. I'm going to measure the circumference and the diameter of this particular circle and you'll notice something really interesting. So I've got this ribbon here. And if I wrap it around like so, until the two ends of the ribbon meet, I think that's about the right spot. So this is the distance that I've got here. It was from this end to where my index finger is. So I'm going to mark that out on the table like so, here to here. So this distance here, this is the circumference of this jar. Now, if I were to compare the circumference of the jar to its diameter, you can see I've actually pre-measured this one. Uh, that's that distance from one side to the opposite side. You can see that obviously the circumference is much longer than the diameter. But the question I'm interested in and that mathematicians down the ages have wondered is, how much longer? What number of diameters would fit into the circumference? Well, here's one diameter. Here's two, here's a third one, and then you can see there's kind of a little leftover bit here. It turns out that's about uh, an eighth of this circle over here, or somewhere between an eighth and a, and a seventh. So that distance there, that little extra bit, and all together means you've got three and a bit diameters that fit into your circumference. So the ratio between the circumference and the diameter, what happens when you divide this longer number, or this larger number, by these smaller ones, that's three and a little bit. Now, what's wild is that this actually isn't just particular, this three and a bit relationship, it's not just particular to this circle here. I've got a much larger circle here, it's actually from a tin of biscuits, and I can do much the same thing. Let's put it here. I'm going to use the same ribbon and I will wrap it around and this is where it stops. Okay, so this is a bit longer. 
So let's put this distance out here. I think I've got just enough space there. All right, so I've got, oh, I just, <laughs> that was clever. I let go of the wrong side of the ribbon, so I forgot how long I was measuring. Let's try it one more time. There we go. So you can see it. That's about right. There, okay. Let's not let go of that part. That's the part that's important to remember. Okay, there we go. And now I'll grab my marker. There's the spot and there's the other end. Don't know. Okay, so now here is this much longer circumference because the circle that I was measuring was much bigger. And now if I go back to my tin here, here it is. I've got this diameter also pre-measured. There it is, roughly. And you can see that if I take this diameter and pop it against the circumference, and I can fit another diameter in there, and then I can fit another diameter, you can see, just like before, it's three diameters plus a little bit. And I'll just put this one back so you can see that same relationship. That little bit, it turns out, is one, four, one, five, nine, two, six, five, and then those numbers just go on forever. And this is one of the wild things about this strange number, pi, one of the reasons why it's so important. Those numbers there, these decimal points, they keep going and going forever. They never end, they never ever repeat. It's incredible, and that's what makes this number so unusual and special and important. Now, as you can see, this number, pi, it comes from circles, that's where it begins. But one of the other reasons why mathematicians love pi is that it comes up in places in real life that seem to have nothing to do with circles. Anytime there is some kind of pattern that rhythmically repeats over and over again, like the cycles of the moon, or how long it takes for the Earth to orbit around the sun, which is actually not a circular path, it's an elliptical path. Whenever you're measuring out things that have a rhythm to themselves, and they're cyclical is the word that we would use, pi, this number, 3.14159, etc., it seems to reappear and it comes up again and again and again and that's why it deserves its own name. So I hope you discover some cool things about pi, maybe go do a bit of research on your own and some measurements and this is just one little window into how wonderful mathematics is and how it's hiding in all kinds of places, even the ones you don't expect.